In today's lab, we are going to help solve a problem. Chase's grandfather is allergic to the metal nickel. And I have several items listed here that he may come in contact with them, and I want to ensure that if the object might have nickel in them, that he doesn't touch them so he doesn't have an allergic reaction. One of the ways that we might be able to check for this is with a magnet. A magnet is attracted to iron, cobalt, and nickel. So I have a group of items here. I have a nail, a wooden block, a bolt, a nut, a washer, a metal letter J, a coin, a red wire, a piece of aluminum foil, a known mass, a two gram weight, and a cotter pin. And I know that magnets are attracted to those three things, iron, cobalt, and nickel, and I might be able to eliminate some of these things and not have Chase's grandfather come in contact with them and have them allergic reaction. What I've done is made a quick data table here where I have the items listed. So I got wood, coin, nail, so on and so forth. We list all the items. And then I made a prediction. Now, a magnet will do one of three things with these items. It will either attract to that item, it will repel that item, or it will do nothing. And then what I have over here is the space available for what actually happens with the magnet. And when we do this, we can help formulate our hypothesis in an if-then statement. For example, if I use a magnet, then I can identify possible materials that might have nickel in them. Therefore, Chase's grandfather should not be in contact with him until further testing. So here I have a magnet, and I will simply touch an item and see if it is attracted, repelled, or nothing happens. The first is a nail. The nail is attracted. So what I would do is I'd find the nail and I said in my prediction that it would repel, but I would put the actuals that it was attracted. It's okay if your predictions are wrong. Next is the block of wood. Nothing seems to happen. I will place it over here. Next is a cotter pin. Oh, this is a, an object that quickly came off the surface of the lab station. That is because magnetic forces work over distance. Next is the known mass. I may have predicted that this would have attracted because it's a piece of metal, but I see that it does not. Next I have a bolt. And I'm seeing that I'm able to make the bolt move just with the magnet, so I'm thinking that yes, the bolt is attracted to the magnet. Next, I have the nut. The nut is the same thing. It is attracted. Then I have a washer. The washer easily came up off the lab station table, so it too is attracted. Here I have a piece of aluminum foil. The aluminum foil, although metal, is not attracted to magnet. One might conclude that nickel, cobalt, or iron is not used to make this foil. Here I have a red wire. It too, nothing happens. So I would conclude that that does not have cobalt, nickel, or iron in it. Here I have a big coin. It's a large piece of metal, but I don't think that there's any cobalt, nickel, or iron in the coin. And then last is the letter J, and I was able to pick that up off of the lab station because it does contain nickel, iron, or cobalt, and it was attracted, so I can put it over here in this pile. So now I have two piles, and I can say to Chase's grandpa that it's okay to handle these, but please be careful handling these items. They may contain nickel. This demonstration should help you complete your lab report.